Lebanese militant group Hezbollah has confirmed that its chief, Saeed Hassan Nasrallah, has been killed in an Israeli strike. IDF announced Nasrallah's assassination was carried out by a squadron F-15I jet equipped with bunker-busting bombs. The strike also took out a commander of Iran's Islamic Revolutionary Guard Corps, the Quds force in Lebanon. Hezbollah, uh, chief's death was condemned by Iran's axis of resistance, including Hamas and Yemen, based Houthi rebels that said Nasrallah's assassination will only strengthen the resistance. The U.S. stated that it did not have advance warning of the strike and that the U.S. Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin spoke to Israel's Defense Minister Yoav Gallant as the operation was already underway. Israeli Army spokesperson Daniel Hagari, on the other hand, stated that the killing of Hezbollah chief and I quote, makes the world a safer place. I know that you're seeing uh, reports of a significant strike in Be Beirut today. Uh, I spoke by phone earlier with my counterpart uh, in Israel, Minister Gallant. The United States was not involved in Israel's operation. Nasrallah. הוא האחראי לרצח וחטיפה של ישראלים ואזרחים מכל העולם לאורך שנים. נסראללה היה מגדולי האויבים של מדינת ישראל בכל הזמנים. הוא היווה איום על אזרחי מדינת ישראל לאורך עשרות שנים, וחיסולו הופך את העולם למקום בטוח יותר. The news first broke after Israeli military spokesperson Lieutenant Kano Nadav Shoshani wrote on X, and I quote, Hassan Nasrallah is dead. The Israeli military then announced that the Hezbollah chief will no longer be able to terrorize the world. Iran's Supreme Leader Ayatollah Ali Khamenei, meanwhile, condemned what he called Israel's short-sighted and foolish policy. He added Israel would not be able to bring the robust structure and strength of Hezbollah down. Reportedly, in view of Nasrallah's assassination, Khamenei has been moved to a secure location under heightened security. Iran has also cancelled all flights to Lebanon. Hezbollah chief was killed alongside the group's southern front commander, Ali Karki, and another top commander, Mohammad Ali Ismail, at an underground command complex. The IDF says Hezbollah's entire military chain of command was eliminated. Footage released by the Israeli army shows what it says. A Defense Minister Yoav Gallant, Army Chief Hazi Halevi, and Air Force Chief Tomar Bar at a command center during the operation. Israel says it has been planning the attack on Nasrallah for a long time. בזמן הנכון, בצורה מאוד חדה, ואנחנו עכשיו עוברים להכין בצורה מאוד חדה גם את הדברים הבאים. בסופו של דבר, אני מדגיש עוד פעם מוכנות שיא בכל הגזרות שלנו, כל הכוחות, כולל חבירה לארגונים האחרים, צריך להיות תיאום מאוד טוב, מוכנות מאוד טובה. Uh, chief's killing, saying that it is part of a psychological war aimed at unsettling the population. Some Lebanese citizens say Hassan Nasrallah will reappear. In his final speech on September 19th, Hezbollah leader denounced the deadly Israeli attacks that blew up radios and pages across Lebanon and described them as a potential declaration of war. لا شك أن العدوان الذي حصل هو عدوان كبير وكما قلت في سياق الكلمة هو غير مسبوق وسيواجه بحساب عسير وقصاص عادل من حيث يحتسبون ومن حيث لا يحتسبون Gadi Francis is, is our correspondent in Beirut she is now joining us on the phone Gadi Francis uh, we did receive a, a message or a text on X from the United Nations High Commissioner for Refugees. He says that more than 50,000 Lebanese and Syrians living in Lebanon 
have now crossed into Syria, fleeing Israeli airstrikes. Can you confirm this for us? Well, we are not sure about the number because the statistics are still underway because the people are still in the process of migrating and leaving and searching for uh, refuge after they have been forcibly evacuated from their homes because they are being striked. So the number on the, a few days ago was 22,000 as per the Lebanese um, formal and uh, admin that are, uh, and the ministry, but because yesterday, last night, uh, Beirut became the target, so many other thousands fled. Now, these numbers are not confirmed and they are expected to even rise mm -hmm. uh, because the airstrikes did not stop and more and more people are forced, even the, from uh, many of the people in Beirut have been displaced from South Lebanon or from Beqa. Uh, other than that number, Eric, there are tens of thousands that are displaced internally in the country, right. whether in uh, schools uh, or uh, places that have been designated by the, by the government, or in other homes, or many of them have been displaced throughout the past few months, and they have rented other places in other areas, other quote-unquote safer areas in Lebanon. Mm -hmm. So this is just the tip of the iceberg allow me to say many actually, other tens of thousands of Lebanese actually actually Gadi Francis according to the United Nations it says uh, well over 200,000 are displaced inside Lebanon so this is the number that uh, the United Nations is currently providing and Gadi Francis is our correspondent like I mentioned in Beirut these what you see on your screens are fresh visuals in Beirut, these are fresh airstrikes by Israel in Beirut. The number of people who are fleeing Lebanon is undetermined at the moment, but uh, we do understand that flights to Lebanon have been cancelled. Gadi Francis, can you confirm that for us? Um, no, we are not sure that all the flights in Lebanon have been cancelled because the Middle East Airlines, that is the Lebanese Airlines, have not cancelled any of its flights. What has been cancelled are the Iranian flights. The Iranian civilian flights to Lebanon that are uh, numerous and diverse in, per week. Well, actually, earlier today, the Ministry of Transport in Lebanon reported that the um, Beirut airport towers were hijacked and there were Israeli forces talking to Iranian planes before landing in Beirut airport, warning them not to land because this would jeopardize the safety of Beirut airport. Now this must have been the reason why later that day, which is today, later and uh, several hours uh, later, we have seen reported after Iranian agencies that the Iranian civilian flights have been cancelled to Beirut airport. Mm -hmm. Other planes? We have not confirmed. Now, we have to take into consideration that during the past week, all other airlines, other than the Lebanese airline that flies all around the world, Middle East Airlines, all other airlines were not flying to Beirut in the first place, Eric. All right, that is uh, Gadi Francis. Gadi Francis, stay with me uh, because we are receiving the latest updates from Beirut, Lebanon, and also from Israel. And what we understand at this moment is that uh, Gallant, who's the Israel's defense minister, has uh, been quoted saying that the killing of Hezbollah's leader is one of the most important countermeasures in Israel's history. He went on to say that whoever starts a war against Israel and tries to harm its citizens will pay a very heavy price. Even today, we are not stopping. Let's talk to Dr. Farshid Bagarian, who's a political analyst from Tehran. Doctor, thank you very much for joining us at this hour. What do you make of the situation happening in West Asia at this moment? Thank you very much for the invitation. The fact is, uh, uh, if you see the big picture right now, the war is devastating all around the Middle East. And this is what we are... Uh, uh, this is terrible for all the people and the population here because if you see the Lebanon right now, the the establishment, the displacement, 
the evacuation of people is uh, being happened? Uh, what is the place for evacuation for these people? Nowhere. Syria is the no place to, to leave right now. So this is a very bad situation. Even in Iran, uh, there are too, too many... Uh, it's the, it better to say that the major part of Iranian people right now that supporting the government ask the government to take an action and take an action not only for this uh, strike, uh, I mean the assassination of Mr. Hassan Nasrallah, even the Mr. Hani Ismail Haniya was assassinated in Iran. And these two uh, is uh, uh, is the big problem. And in in coming future, not only I'm not talking about the very long future, the new future. And these people may be may be able to be a big to uh, uh, to be processed for the government that we we need action uh, because this action is not only to to renew and um, I mean the the prestige of the Iran. This is to rebuild the uh, the security, rebuild the trust between the government and the people. This is very important for us. Nice. Uh, in Tehran right now, there is some protesters and they are asking for the action right now. And the other part of people is uh, fearing from the uh, future and they are, uh, how can I explain, they are rushed to the... Uh, curing, uh, uh, currency exchange offices to buy dollars and then, and gold. So this is uh, the uh, unknown situation. This is no trusty situation. And uh, the government itself has to solve this problem mm -hmm. to to take an action because uh, uh, Bagarian, we, you let know... Me, let me just interrupt you uh, yeah. for a moment and ask, uh, uh, let's talk about Iran because um, the government of Iran is saying that uh, the axis of, re of resistance will not be breached by Netanyahu. What sort of approach will, will Iranian uh, government or will Iran as a country take going forward? Because you are talking of mentioning of actions. What sort of actions are we talking about? Yeah, thank you. Uh, you know, the axis of uh, resistance is not uh, uh, supported by Iran yesterday. This is more than, maybe more than four years that they are supported that. Hezbollah was supported by Iran, by Iran and is supporting, and the, Iran will keep on supporting the Hezbollah. But, you know, if you see the uh, administration team of the Hezbollah, nobody, nobody remained to, for example, to give an announcement, even an announcement as a resolution. It means that the problem of Hezbollah right now is the administration team and the leadership team. Mm -hmm. For the next step, the Hezbollah must recover itself by help of Iran or without, no problem, to recover the leadership. And after that, the action without leadership is not meaning. Uh, Iran right now, uh, I'm sure that in not only Iran, Syria, Lebanon, and many other countries that they are making, uh, I mean, uh, uh, the, the decision makers all around the world, they are talking about the this action of Israel right now, mm -hmm. what happened in, in uh, Lebanon. Because, you know, the, remember last week, the pager, the, I mean, a radio problem, the blast, the, right. the, it was a technology blast. It says that the, the I mean, the uh, Communication heighted or... blast. Like we yeah, yeah, have yeah. to put it. The, oh. This was fifth generation war. This fifth generation war is not a conventional war. If you want, if you want to uh, make a victory, you must you must uh, switch from the fourth generation of war. I mean, the conventional to the fifth generation. Israel right now, Israel right now, uh, make a better place. I mean, psychological place in, in psychological war. Israel uh, has the superior post right now. But Hezbollah cannot answer such this attack right now because the leadership problem, the communication problem in, in, in Hezbollah, in Lebanon, it takes maybe more than f five or six months to, re to be recovered. Mm -hmm. Even in Dr. Lebanon, Bagarian, there is no electricity. Dr. Yeah. Bagarian, yeah. I understand that. I understand all that you're saying and all the insights that you have. But I just want to understand one thing. We had the foreign yeah. minister of Iran saying that the path yeah. of Hezbollah's chief Hassan Nasrallah will continue despite yeah. his killing in an Israeli airstrike on Beirut. Yeah. I just wanted to understand yeah. what path is he talking about because according to Israeli's, uh, Israeli eyes, Nasrallah 
was a terrorist. And now we yeah. hear from the government of Iran that um, actually Nasrallah had a vision. What vision are they yeah. talking about? What is this path that they are talking about? I mean, this path is not different from the resistant path. This is not a new path. This is the new doctrine. Because if you want to switch from the fourth generation to fifth generation, you have to end doctrine all of your aspect of your war. This is the path. Because, you know, Israel named that uh, operation New Order. New Order is not a new new word. This is not the first time. Uh, you know, heavily, Mr. Reagan used to use this, I mean, New Order. And it came back to Francis Bacon in the 16th century. New Order needs, means need new path. The new path is during, I mean, among this resistance, access of resistance, we have to end doctrine and use sophisticated uh, ways to uh, to persuade this war or persuade this resistance. This is, it means that no conventional ways, no conventional paths, is no, we, we no longer work in this world. So it means that Iran, Israel, Lebanon, or whatsoever country that it, they are in this uh, involved in this I mean, resistance access, must uh, change their doctrine to 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 face themselves. This is the new path. Okay. And Iran definitely has Iran has to move, has to move to to, to upper doctrine to give rivalry responses. I mean, I, I'm not I'm using revenge because the government literature has no revenge. Revenge is not not right prop award for this uh, for government. Revenge may be used by people, but public. But revenge by state means response. Iran has to respond because the people in Iran, in Iran needs action. Okay. This is new path. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I've been talking to Dr. Farshid Bagarian, who's a political analyst from Tehran. Doctor, we'll have to leave it there. Thank you very much for talking to us today. Thank you very much for your invitation. Thank you. Bye. For all the latest news, download the We On app and subscribe to our YouTube channel.